giants. They make us look like tiny grasshoppers. We can't live in this land. Giants, huge armies. What kind of land were they talking about and who were saying these things? Listen closely to today's message to find out more. Thousands of years ago, God promised to send the savior who would come to our world and save us from sin. God also said that this savior would come from a special chosen family. And this family was called the Israelites. God also said that he would take the Israelites and give them a land called Canaan to be their home. Canaan was also referred to as the promised land. The Israelites dreamed of living in the land that God promised them, but the ruler of Egypt had kept them as slaves. Now you remember this story, but God did not forget the promise and God used Moses to free the slaves out of Egypt. God showed his wisdom, power, and faithfulness to rescue the Israelites from slavery and bring them to the promised land. But before they went into their new land, Moses sent 12 spies to explore the land. These 12 sp spies were a leader from each of the 12 tribes. Um, now the spies went into the land and they were looking around. They saw this beautiful place. It was filled with juicy figs, but they needed to be quiet in order to sneak past the empty, the enemy's fortress. The fortress was pretty big and the people inside looked strong and scary. But it was, the land was so good. There were bunches of grapes and these grapes were so big that it took two men to carry one bunch of grape. Um, when the spies returned to tell Moses and the Israelites about the land, there were two reports. The spies agreed that the land was beautiful and it was filled with wonderful things, but there was a disagreement. Listen to what the two different spies said. The one spy, the downing spy said, this land is filled with huge armies. They will destroy us. And we saw them. Some of them were so tall that they made us look like grasshoppers. We can't live here. But there were two spies named um, Joshua and Caleb. Well, not really spies, but they were Moses' leaders. Joshua and Jacob actually reported, this is the land that God promised us. He will give it to us. The Lord will be with us and we shouldn't be afraid of even these giants. We should trust God and go into the good land that he told us to go and that he provided. Which, two, which group of spies would you listen to? Who did Moses listen to? You can read um, in today's, uh, this week's Bible passage in Numbers chapters 13 and 14 to find out more in detail. Um, unfortunately, the Israelites, they listened to the doubting spies, the 10 spies that were saying, this land is, you know, it's so scary. We can't defeat the enemies. We can't do it. Let's not, let's not go there. The Israelites listened to them instead. So God had already been faithful in so many ways, but instead of trusting in God and being faithful again, the Israelites believed the 10 spies and they should have trusted when God said to trust me. So today's, uh, this week's word up is God's way is best. You know, God wants you to rely on his understanding and his wisdom. And that's what this week's memory verse is too. Trust God and lean not on your own understanding. God's purpose for your life is so much better than any plan you could make up for your own. Now, sometimes you know, God gives us the wisdom and we can make plans for ourselves. But most times when you are unsure, make sure you pray and ask God for wisdom because his way is always best. So now the Israelites began to complain. They were mad at Rose, uh, Moses, but even worse than that, they were mad at God. They said they would rather be dead than go into the land that God had given them. How could they? They decided to choose a new leader who could take them back to Egypt. They refused to follow God's way. Um, so I told you Joshua and Jacob were the only one that trusted God, trusted God. And they reminded the people that the land already belonged to them because God had given it to them. God would protect them and keep them 
uh, keep his promise to give them the land as their home. When the people had heard um, that Joshua and Caleb, what they had to say, they became so angry that they decided that they wanted to kill them and murder them who were trusting in God. But thankfully, suddenly, God appeared to them at the, uh, the tent place of meeting um, where the people were worshiping. And God reminded them that he was there. He had the power to strike them all dead. But Moses pleaded and he begged and asked God not to do that. So God agreed not to destroy the Israelites, but he said anyone who refused to trust in God, who refused to enter Canaan because they were too scared of the giants and the huge enemies of the enemy's armies, that they would never get to go in. The Israelites would wander in the desert for a long time. They would have children and live in the desert for 40 years instead of entering the promised land. When those who refused to enter the Canaan had died, God would take their grown-up children who had grown up over the 40 years and they would get to enter the promised land. So Joshua and Caleb, the two spies who believed, they would get to enter the promised land, but the rest of the Israelites and the other spies, they wouldn't get to. God, um, but in that 40 years, God didn't abandon the Israelites. God still took care of them. He protected their shoes so they would never worn out. They'd be worn out. God sent manna. Manna is something like a sweet bread daily, every single day from the sky for them to eat. He did this for all of 40 years. Even though the Israelites had sinned and they didn't trust in God and they even wanted to, you know, kill Joshua and Caleb, God showed them kindness that they didn't deserve. And I want to teach you a word, gracious. God is gracious. This means that God shows kindness even when we don't deserve it. Being kind to someone who don't, who don't deserve it is really hard. But God does that to all of us every single day. God was so gracious to the disobedient Israelites. He never stopped being gracious to them, even when they wandered the desert. Um, during this time, Moses had died and God chose Joshua to be the new leader of Israel. Joshua was one of those two spies who believed in God and now he was leading God's people. Finally, the Israelites were ready to go into Canaan, but the overflowing Jordan River was blocking their way. There was no bridge and no way around the river. They couldn't swim across. For more, you could read um, the book of Joshua chapter one and chapter three. So they, are, they didn't know what to do, but again, God was gracious and made a way for them. God told Joshua to tell the priests to pick up the Ark of the Covenant, which was a, this beautiful golden box that helped them remember that God was with them and to step into the Jordan River. This time, the people chose to do things God's way and not their own way. And they followed the Ark of the Covenant as the priests carried it into the river, and the Israelites watched as the priests stepped right into the river. And when they did, suddenly, there was no water around the priest's feet. How did that happen? Only God could constantly and instantly be gracious and he instantly dried up the water um, and made a path through the river. Kind of like how Moses, you know, used a staff to split the Red Sea. God did it again. Um, after they had finished crossing, God caused the river to start flowing um, with water again. God showed them that he has the power to take care of them no matter what. Now the Israelites, after 40 years, and not the first group of Israelites, but their children's children, they got to enter the promised land called Canaan. So this week, I want you to think about this story. When you think that your way could be a good way or your decision could be a good decision, um, trust God just one more time. Or you, if you don't know what to do, or if you think, what, but I think I wanna do this way or do this thing. Always pray and always ask God for wisdom and he will graciously give you his plan and share with you what you need to do and follow. So I want you to remember that. Remember that we're gracious, how God is gracious and so good to us even when we don't deserve it. He shows kindness and God it has the mighty power and we should um, choose his way because God's way is